Hey everyone, it's Yvonne and today I'm going to go over some basic sewing techniques for knitted and stretchy fabrics. Uh, a lot of beginner sewers choose to start with uh, a knitted fabric because they think it's going to be easier. And while that might be true from a pattern drafting perspective because it's stretchy and a bit forgiving, um, it's not true for the sewing perspective. Uh, knits are actually one of the most difficult fabrics to sew with because if you have a knitted fabric, it's stretchy, whereas thread is not. So um, I'm going to go over those techniques. Um, so I'm going to just add a normal straight stitch to this. As you can see, I'm sewing just a regular straight stitch on here. Now the problem arises when you stretch the fabric, the thread will break because the thread does not stretch. So you need some way to give the thread ease. Now uh, with a commercially made garment, that would be, um, it would be surged and that would give the thread some ease. But most people don't have a serger, they have a normal sewing machine. So I'm gonna show you just some techniques um, to, to get around that to give the thread ease so it can stretch. Most newer sewing machines now will have a stretch setting. And what this does, it does two stitches forward, one stitch back, two stitches forward, one stitch back, two stitches forward, one stitch back, and so on and so on. And what that does is it gives the uh, seam, uh, it gives the thread a bit of extra ease so it can stretch. And see, the seam now stretches with the fabric. One of the downsides though of this type of seam is that it's almost impossible to pick out this seam because you're basically back stitching every other stitch. So it's, you can't pull this seam out. If you have an older sewing machine that doesn't have a uh, knit or stretch setting, you can kind of get around it and use a zigzag setting. Okay, so on my sewing machine, I've set the stitch for zigzag. Now for the width, you don't want it to be too wide. I'm gonna go with a medium or small zigzag. And then the stitch length, you want the stitch length to be about half of what you'd normally have it be. So can you see this row of zigzag stitches? It stretches because the thread's got some ease. Another great way to sew uh, seams on stretchy fabric is a twin needle. Now this will have uh, two rows of straight stitches uh, and then if you turn it over on the back, it'll be zigzag. So the thread still has ease, but the stitch looks perfectly straight on top. To use your needle, you're gonna have to load part of your thread onto a bobbin, um, and then you're just gonna uh, thread it through your machine as you would normally, except for it's going to be a double thread. So it's going through the tension, through all the sewing machine parts, except for it's together, it's a double thread. And when you get to the bottom, split apart the threads and the thread one through one needle and the other through the other needle. Okay, so on the top, you've got two rows of straight stitches and then if you look at the back, it's zigzag. So the thread still has ease to stretch. I really like this uh, uh, double needle technique for things like hems and top stitching because it does two rows of stitches that are perfectly parallel. It looks really professional. A couple other things you might want to consider is if your fabric is snagging, make sure you're using a ballpoint needle. A ballpoint needle is dull on the end so that instead of um, breaking the fibers of the fabric, uh, it kind of slides through them. Um, if we are finding that the thread is not picking up and it's skipping stitches, first adjust your tension. Uh, then you can consider getting a, I think it's called a stretch needle, where the hole is a bit bigger in the needle, so it, it makes it easier for it to pick up the thread. I'm not sure exactly how it works, but they do make needles for if you're having that problem with the thread picking up. Another common problem is that because the fabric stretches, the fabric on the bottom might be advancing faster than the fabric on the top. Uh, and the reason this would be is because on the bottom of your machine there's something called a feed dog. It's a little grippy thing that kind of bounces and advances the fabric. And now there isn't that on the top. And with most fabrics it's not a big deal. It doesn't make a difference. However, with some knits it does because the fabric on the bottom is going to go and the fabric on the top is going to stay still. So what you need for that is something called 
called a walking foot. Uh, now what that does, it has kind of like a feed dog thing on the top. So as the fabric on the bottom is advancing, the fabric on the top is being forced to advance too, so it keeps it together. Now those cost about 30 bucks and I don't have one, um, but what I do in that case, uh, if I need something like that or if I'm having that problem, is that I'll switch from my metal foot to a plastic foot and this kind of slides over the fabric a bit better. Um, you should probably just read your manual that came with your sewing machine and there should be an explanation of all the foots. But if you don't have a walking foot, a, a, a foot for sewing like delicate fabrics and stuff, it's usually plastic and it advances the, or it slides over the fabric fairly easily. Another thing you might want to consider is if you're not using fabric that's 100% natural, you probably want to have either a face mask or maybe even a bandana that you've wetted down and kind of tied across your mouth and nose because knitted fabrics kick up a lot of lint when they're uh, cut and when they're sewn. Um, and when it's 100% natural, if it's cotton, it's not really a big deal, but I find a lot of fabrics now are not cotton, they're poly cotton, and you might not realize that unless you read the label. And well, the, the lint that's kicked up from polyester, if it gets in your nose and if it gets in your lungs, it's very difficult for your body to get rid of it. Um, and I know for me in the past when I've worked with knits, I've been sick for like two or three days afterwards and it's taken me quite a while to figure out that this is why. So you might want to consider that if you're not using 100% cotton fabric. Thanks for watching. I hope you uh, enjoyed the tips I gave you for working with knitted fabrics.